So we're going to finish out with uh, Aviation Adventure. Um, yeah, oh, we've done like Human Body and a couple of the other Knowledge Adventure ones. Age appropriate, eight and up. Okay, yeah, let's um, let's go have a look at that one. See if it's any good. Because I did enjoy it. Uh, the only one I really played from school was like the 3D body adventure, but there were heaps that came out. And yes, I do remember the music being very loud. Sorry, guys. Oh, okay. Oh, we could have checked some previews. No, no, go, go back. I want to do some, um... How do I... Yeah, just eject. <laughs> just get out of here, man. Okay. No, let's... Yeah, let's see what other Knowledge Adventure products are on the disc. I've never heard of these ones. My First Encyclopedia, Magic Theatre, or Kids Encyclopedia. Okay. Welcome to your demo of Magic Theatre, the animated cartoon. Ah, right I. This demo is a very limited version of the actual product. This is your help screen. Click on the icons to hear what they do. This looks when familiar. Done, click the Magic Theatre icon okay. in the center of the screen. I remember these from like the the Spider-Man movie maker ones. Maybe they they're the ones who did it. I'm not sure. We haven't played them yet. I was waiting for a day where I could like sit down and be creative and like do those ones. Welcome to our magical tree. It's a very good <laughs> place to learn. Learn about what? Everything you need to know about the special tree. Hey, there's my hair from the nineties. Like it's not working. Just move your cursor up to the top of the screen. If you want to climb down, even all the way under the ground, move your cursor down to the bottom of the screen. Yeah, this one looks all right. If you have a question, just click your mouse right here. Oh, and we can kind of fiddle around with it a bit. How do our bodies work? So click on the girl by the red cross to learn about your body. Sure. I can't hear anything out of the MIDI though. <laughs> we can go all the way down to hell. Okay. Um, so a lot of that's, yeah, locked off because it's a demo. Yeah, fair enough. Alright, so what else will you have? Coming soon, a great way to meet other knowledge adventure customers, the adventurers. Yeah, what's this about? Oh, you don't want to tell me anything about that. Okay. Yeah, right. -o. Right, now we're ready to go on AV8. Ooh, F4U Secret Sortie. Go to the Aviation Theatre trivia game. I literally cannot hear anything over this many. I have to actually turn down my in game audio. Wow. <clears throat> oh, Paper Plane Factory. Oh, man. Yeah, right, eh? The square wing. Start with the plane pattern. Click then move the mouse to fold or unfold the plane. Oh, right, eh? So you can actually move through the steps. Yeah, right, eh? Right, eh? Okay. Fold along the lines two through seven, proceeding to fold over each time, turn over, fold along the center line. Straighten the wings so they're horizontal. Yeah, God, I haven't made paper airplanes for a long fucking time. Oh, we can do it this way as well. Okay, okay. Um. Oh, you even get narration and stuff. Yeah, right, eh? Ooh, yeah, I vaguely remember doing the Viper. The Viper. <laughs> the Viper. Yeah, so you could just, like, I could, if I wasn't so lazy, I'd be able to just get up off my ass, get some paper, and make myself a glider. Yeah, right, eh? Hence, the Viper will loop if thrown hard and glide if thrown gently. You can adjust the angle of the elevons to control the radius of the loop. Yeah, right, eh? <laughs> the swallow. The catfish. Oh, right, eh? 
Dihedral angles and wing loading. Yeah, tell us about that. Dihedral angles and wing loading. Hmm. <laughs> Dihedral wings slope upward from the fuselage toward the tips. When an aircraft with dihedral wings rolls, the lower wing produces more lift because the exposed length of the lower wing is greater than that of the higher wing. Exposed length is the distance measured horizontally from the fuselage to the wingtip. Because the lower wing is creating more lift, the plane straightens itself. In this way, a paper airplane's tendency to roll can be corrected by increasing its dihedral angle. Most planes have some dihedral angle, but usually only a few degrees. Some planes have an anhedral angle, that is, wings that slope down toward the tips. The side yeah, all right. Control. Airplanes can rotate in three directions. Yeah, all right, all right. Um, yeah, and you get little... So you're just learning the basics about flight and all that sort of thing as well. Okay. Yeah, um, paper plane factory. What other options have we got? Auto narration music, balloon notes. Oh, we get a game with the glider. Okay. Oh, righto, righto. Yeah, we were going to play this at some point too. Okay. Um. All right, we got the whole game within the game, I guess. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So I have to glide the plane on like the little. Oh, it's just what Flappy Bird. Is that what's going on here? Wow, this is this is kind of terrible, actually. Yeah, don't. <laughs> yes, game over. Okay, yeah, I did. I found this is like a standalone thing on like the list but we haven't gotten around to playing it yeah no we're, we're pretty terrible at this um let's let's go back to aviation freaking no no see you now don't want to fly again soon i want to play aviation adventure you coming back on yeah there you go right aviation lab reference library now that sounds boring that gets out of here trivia yeah, we might go this order. We'll do... Oh, we can go to the museum. We'll learn a bit. We'll go to the aviation, do trivia. Go with Secret Sword, whoever that does. And we'll finish with, like, the theatre. Because I want to see some uh, video in this as well. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. Click when you want to get the cursor. Right. Celebrity pilots. Who we got in the famous things? Mario Andretti flies. Mario Andretti. Mario Andretti is one of the world's most famous race car drivers. He has won many major auto races, including the Indianapolis 500. The okay, so he fly. But yeah, he's a race car driver, but he flies ultralights in his spare time. Oh, you got to fly like an F-15 though. Yeah, fair enough. Righto. Boot Gibson. Have you ever wondered what it is like to fit in the space shuttle? All right, yeah. So space shuttle commander Robert Poot Gibson, a shuttle Katrina Muma. Muma? Katrina Muma is 11 years old. Well, she's not so she's 11. She's not a fucking celebrity. Aren't you, who are these people? Yeah, there we go. Neil Armstrong. That's I would classify that as a celebrity pilot. I literally cannot hear anything because the music is so friggin' loud. Can I not? Can't turn it down. Vicky Van Meter. Vicky Van Meter is one adventurous Youngest person. Of, oh, is this the the chick from um? One adventurous kid. In September No, no, I'm thinking of one. Apparently, there was a there was a movie with like Anna Anna Paquin where she like flies an ultra. Hey, gun serial walrus. Um. Oh. Oh, Michael Dorn flies his own jet? Huh, was not aware of that. Watching on your CRT TV, okay. Um... Yep. Yeah. Alright. 
Michael has always had an Ah, okay. Who's Taron Smith though? You would probably recognize Char Oh yeah, the youngest kid from Home Improvement. He plays the youngest son, Mark Pops to fly airplanes, okay. Yeah, alright. This what else we got? Resource center. Non-pilot careers, dogfight theater. Yeah, what's in dogfight theater? Um, examine a, a what? M Mig twenty-three. Okay. Click here and move your mouse to turn the plane. Ah, oh, righto, righto. And just like inspect a Mig. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and go back with that one. All right, um... Oh, and you get actual movies of it too. Okay. Just, I know this is meant to be exciting, but this looks like a really boring dogfight. Yeah, I legit cannot hear anything over the, like, the MIDI music, though. Alright. Oh, right in the tailpipe. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. What else we got? Oh, we got a little internal view. Oh, we can actually look inside an F-15 cockpit. Okay. And apparently you can... What chair do I use? Ah, oh, just... Ah, oh, what's the brand? Typhoon. I think I got it at like JB Hi-Fi or something. Um... Okay. Move around the cockpit. Yeah, move the cockpit again. What do you, can we like... Move the cursor over the entrance. I'll just hover over. Up front. Yeah, multi. Oh, it just it doesn't give you a description. It doesn't like tell you anything. Um. Engine control panel. Escape ECS. Yeah, right. Right. Okay. Um. What's this one? No, we already saw a dogfight, didn't we? Oh, it's showing an F-15E and then like a, a MIG. Yeah, righto. So what else we got? Pilot careers. How planes fly. Eh, let's go pilot careers, I guess. Right, so you mean aerobatic pilot, air ambulance pilot, agricultural aviation outlook, corporate fire bomber, Flight instructor. Certified flight instructors, yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you for the follow of Serial Warris. Fucking thingo. Hmm. I have Streamlabs. Streamlabs doesn't work all the time. Um. How planes fly, I guess. Do you want to uh, open the door? There you go. All right. Turn straight talk about curves. Are we just gonna get? Yeah, so it's just gonna be audio that we can't hear over like the MIDI music. Okay. What me fly? Why not? Why not? I I swear this music is getting louder too. Like I turn it like right down on my end. And oh, we can just teleport if we feel the edge. Can we? Can we just leave? Yeah, good. Oh, that was getting really annoying though. Okay, so I guess we'll do like some. Yeah, we'll do some trivia. Welcome to the great aviation trivia quiz. You begin on the first of five levels. You have to answer three questions correctly to advance a level. If you answer two questions wrong, you start the level over. When you succeed, <laughs> you'll, all five levels, you'll see a cool morph. Okay. Planes magically transform to other planes. Identify all 11 planes in the morph and send their names to us at Knowledge Adventure. If you 
a registered user, we'll send you a special reward. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. All right. Which of these was not a major development in military aviation during World War II? The atomic bomb. Jet aircraft. Snazzy flight suits. <laughs> Radar. Um, I want to say flight suits. That's right. Which okay. Of these jet fighters was designed to take off from an ordinary road in Sweden. The Saab Draken. The Volvo Viking. Volvo the made planes. The Viking. The Hagen does HT12 with a special fudge topping. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. No, that's that's clearly not right. Ordinary road in Sweden. Um. You're joking, right? Well, oh, fuck, I don't know. Eh? I didn't look at the bloody... I, I didn't read the reference library. Which of these was not... F okay. And the mill? Oh. Oh, we get some little... Um, whoa, wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> all right. Getting some funny sound video archive footage in this one too. Alright. Oops, try again. <gasps> Oops, try again. Oh my dear lord. Oh, and we had to start again because we got two wrong. A swept wing. Okay. Chicken wings. <laughs> what? Wing. What? Let's fly at supersonic speeds. Um probably a swept wing. Alright, you made it. Great. Which of these was the first plane to cross the Atlantic? Ooh. The Curtis Jenny. The Douglas World Cruiser. The Navy Curtis NC4. The Spirit of St. Louis. Um, shit, was it Douglas? Wood? Try again. Ah, oh, bugger. The earliest planes landed on... Chuck Yeager. Ow! Oh, get that plane off me! It hurts! <laughs> Wheels. Deserted highways. Skids. It was skid stuff now, wasn't it? Job. Yeah. The world's okay. first supersonic plane was the X-1. The P-12. The X-2. The X-15. I'm gonna say it's the X1. All right, you made it. All right, I get a little animation though. <laughs> Was that Tom Kenny doing the voiceover? Who first envisioned the helicopter? Sir George Cayley. Probably Da Vinci, I'd say. Igor Sikorsky. This flight attendant, Monique, while serving beef bourguignon on a flight to Paris in 1937, what? with a wonderful wine. Leonardo da Vinci. Good da Vinci. <laughs> Who invented the parachute? Oh, um... Lloyd Smith. Mrs. Paul and all her fish sticks. <laughs> what? Thomas Selfridge's insurance agent. Are you covered? I can sell you a policy. Jacques Garnarine. Nah, yeah, probably this guy. Try again. Oh, what? What was used to fuel the Montgolfier brothers' historic balloon ascent? Old shoes and rotten meat. Ugh. A hearty breakfast. <laughs> Magnesium rod. Solar power. Um. All right, you Oh, made that is correct. What critical development was missing from early aviation designs? Uh, probably the... Fire extinguishers. Yeah, that's that's helpful to have. With funding. <laughs> Complete control surfaces. That yummy airline... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can go to the reference right, sub section Good if we need work. a hint. Okay. Cool that we're getting the little animation, so... It's kind of holding my interest for a little longer. Oh, 
Sure. In 1927, Yudonay Costas was the first to fly from New York to Paris. Yudonay Costas? What? New Jersey to Brussels. New York to Paris and back non-stop. Paris to New York. Um, Paris to New York, I guess. Job. Oh, we got one. Who was the first to fly solo around the world? Ooh. Wiley Post in 1933. Chuck Yeager in 1947. Nah, no. Nah. Charles Lindbergh in 1927. Amelia Earhart in 1937. I want to say Amelia Earhart. You're joking, right? Oh, no, it'd be thing. Fuck. I know it wasn't Chuck Yeager because he's famous for breaking the sand barrier. Being the first black woman hey, uh, aviator. Jules Vedrian. Polar bear hunting. His daring glider experiments. Breaking 100 mile per hour barrier. Off an eagle with a pistol while flying over the Pyrenees. Oh, that, that actually sounds legit. Congratulations. Holy shit, it's Amelia. correct. Okay. What year did Louis Blériot fly across the <clears throat> Channel? Oh, um, no idea. 1909. What do you mean it's no? Oh, I am so confused. 1914. 1906. Well, this is tricky too, because it's. If it was before 19. What was that? 1911? When the Wright brothers did their plane? Um. Say 1914. Joking, right? Ah, fuck. Let's goof that again. Where are they getting all this old. Oh, God. Yeah, it's the 90s. You still had like. Projectors and fucking film footage and all that sort of thing, didn't you? I've actually heard that fucking voice clip in the, um, like the Finger Family videos and shit. Okay. Alright, no, I don't think we're gonna get this. Let's, let's go with the, um. I, yeah, I wanna see what secret sortie is it involves. We get to actually fly. It was August 1939, a peaceful time, and the nation was engrossed oh. with high and 12 cylinder engines. Suddenly, the world was thrown into war against the might of the Third Reich. You have been selected to fly a series of secret sorties or missions to end this terrible war. You will pilot the hottest aircraft around the. Oh, so it is an actual flight sim, but you've got to, like, get out of the program to play it. Yeah, we'll give it a quick look, I suppose. Oh, except that just closed the whole program. Shit. Okay, I guess it wasn't on there. All right, well, we'll quickly jump back in and finish with the um, the theater. Theater was always the best part, because, yeah, you just had videos you could just watch instead of having a piss fart around going through all the... Um... Yeah, like sitting here looking through a fucking reference library. Sure. Let's, let's see how exciting that is, shall we? Yeah. Oh, we get some videos at least. Yeah, right. Eh? Importance of doors. Although it is hard to Zoom, retrace, no stop narration, print image. Yeah, okay. Don't have to look through that. Let's let's finish with the theatre, shall we? All right. Oh, option from the menu: choose blooper, documentary, or aviation. Um, well, we'll finish with bloopers. What is with the, like, small children watching all this stuff in the audience, though? Aerial gunners. Ooh, the B-17 bomber. And, oh, you can just scroll through and there's, the oh, there's shit tons here, isn't there? All right. Just space plane. That's not a real plane. I think this is Air Force One. Oh, that's X-30, so... Yeah, they, they thought they were going to get an X-30 before they do, like, suborbital flights. Sure. Okay. Okay, helicopters. What the hell is it lifting? Like a spare engine, or...?
Wow, these are really short fucking videos, aren't they? What was this one about, anyway? No, I actually felt like playing this one because I did see... I was outside and I saw, um... Like some World War Two, Like your, your fighter ones fly over. I, I do believe we actually have the, um... Thing, the actual air show you get in Melbourne on this weekend, so I believe that's why they were out and about. Um, ah, uh, yeah, I've seen these before. And then, yeah, once you get enough height, you turn it forward and it flies like a plane or something. Is that correct? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, cool. All right. What else we got? A Sukhoi. SU-25. Righto, what else we got? Blue Angels in action. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, when they're doing the actual air shows. Yeah, they go in, like, formation and shit. That old fella looks like he's not having a fun time, but... I mean, he's probably got, like, you know, a couple of... couple of several Gs working on him. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, inside the jet engine. <laughs> Look at this fucking baby, though. <laughs> like, Dad, can we watch Boss Baby? <laughs> Shut up, son. Watching stuff about planes. I oh, yeah, aerial refueling stealth technology. Yeah, right, eh? Missiles! Ooh, ooh, chest fire on a missile? Yeah, that's more like it. <clears throat> yeah, cool. Boom! This week. Hang on, what's what's going on in this one? Oh yeah, there's a little Cessna. I didn't see what the uh diary uh thing I Ah. Oh. oh, is that the actual No, Vicky Van Meter. Okay. That's one of the celebrity kids that flew a plane. Yeah, right. Eh? With crash chest dummies. Oh, there's a little simulator. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, it's a simulator, but they're testing like a real plane? Jesus. <laughs> they're putting in some stock footage from Thunderbirds. Nice. All right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm not even getting the balloons up anymore. Oh, yeah, showing you how um, jump jets work. Ah, oh, some, something about DARPA on there. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah, jump jet, jet harrier, test piling, wind tunnel testing, and then we're back around the start. Righto. Documentary theater. Sit back and enjoy knowledge adventures, new reels, and mini documentaries. Okay, yeah, so it was Lindbergh who went around the world on the Spirit of St. Louis. Everyone said it couldn't be done, but that didn't stop Lucky Lindy. On a shoestring budget of $6,000, the U.S. Army Reserve Officer commissioned Ryan Airlines Incorporated of San Diego to build the Spirit Jeez, of St. hell. After a That's a bouncy fucking takeoff. Lucky Lindy took off from Roosevelt Field at 7.54 a.m. Some 33 and a half hours later, the dramatic image of his plane appeared over the crowd of thousands at Le Bourget in Paris. Landing to the accolades of the adoring throngs, Lucky Lindy secured a new world record. And his Man, that's pretty impressive getting around in like 33 hours. Knackered by the end of it. I oh, have, yeah, right, brothers?
Yeah, no, no actual white stuff about the Wright brothers. Crash the Hindenburg. Okay. Oh, is this actual like archive audio from the the radio announcer? It's practically standing still now. They've dropped ropes out of the nose of the ship, and uh, it burst into flames. It's rising terrible. Oh my! Get out of the way, please. It's burning, bursting into flames, and and it's falling on the morning fast. And all the folks between that this is terrible. This is the one of the worst catastrophes in the world. And the flame is rising to the ground, not quite to the morning mass. All the humanity and all the fans are just screaming around it. I don't. Do it. <laughs> I can't talk to people. His friends are out there. Wow. It, it, it's the actual a, audio of the guy watching the end of that crash. On his it's just like there are massive smoking wreckage. Wow. <laughs> Physical exercise is an important phase in the training of... They're teaching themselves how to flap their wings. Strong arms and strong hands are needed to fire the powerful guns of a bomber. Climbing aboard a fast fighter plane... They're ready for the final test aloft. Guns equipped with camera instead of bullets to check the accuracy of their aim. Flying in formation, the gunners see the enemy exactly as they would from the tail of a bomber. Their job is to protect their ship from assault by diving fighters like this. Score one. And when they land, the camera guns tell the story. Ah, okay. Yeah, back in the days when you yeah could, didn't have lasers or anything, you had to <laughs> wait to see f for the film to develop before you worked out whether you hit your guy or not. Um, where was the B-17? Yeah, there we go. B-17 bomber. Firepower. The B-17 bomber was appropriately nicknamed the Flying Fortress. Between 1935 and 1945, 12,731 B-17s were built. Each of the heavy bombers' five models saw improvements made to the airframe itself and the armaments. The B-17 carried a crew of 10. Each man had a specific task to ensure delivery of the airplane's payload. The G model carried 13 50 caliber machine guns strategically placed throughout the aircraft. Four were located in the nose area two in a newly designed chin turret, and two more on the side. These guns were operated by the bombardier and the navigator to protect against frontal attacks. A top turret gunner guarded against frontal, side, and rear attacks with these two guns, which rotated 360 degrees. The radio operator also defended the airplane during attacks from above with this single 50 caliber gun. The ball turret gunner required a sharp eye and a small body. <laughs> yeah, fuck. It's called the ball turret gun because your balls are literally touching the second side window. Wow. Side of the bomber went into action during lateral attack. The rear of the aircraft was protected. And usually, what happened was, yeah, one of your gunners would get filled full of holes. You have to like drag his corpse out, and run back and forth between each gun. Final stateside training came Ooh. to C-17s. Then it was off to war. Yeah, fair enough. Well, that's it for documentaries. What do we got for bloopers? Featuring hard to find amateur footage of military aviation accidents and bizarre early aircraft. Don't worry, worry about pilots. These planes were equipped with ejector seats. Uh, Albert. Yes, sir. Uh, I want you to look up something in the flight manual. What is it, sir? Are there pontoons on the bottom of this crap? Is this a seaplane? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't even have to do commentary. Someone's doing it for me. Nice. Oh, is this... <laughs> is this the unofficial sequel to uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Kind of looks like Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> I oh, know it's really hard to hear over the MIDI, but I have actually legit have a feeling that um, I think that might be Tom Kenny doing the uh, little voiceover. Wow. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, fair enough. All units return to tower. Yeah, let's get out of here. Wow. Right, can we go like right back to the um little thing out though? Or is it gonna boot me straight out? Yeah, here we go. Let's um let's have a quick look at the credits before we finish up. Just, yeah, I'm really interested to find out if, um, okay, writers. Just want to see if Tom Kenny's in the voice cast. Um, animation, video, still imagery. Look of footage provided by military channel documentary. No humans were hurt in the making of the CD. The tank was unoccupied. Okay. I'm watching Death Sandals video, by the way. That's that's who the, the person is. So if you want to watch a full playthrough, Death, Death Sandals. 